the second season of Picard is already looking to have some excellent and exciting member berries in the form of Q and Guinan. But there are more surprises in store for us that haven't been confirmed for us yet. What is happening during the moment of stress in Picard's life that Q shows up? How will Picard be different now that he is a synthetic? What are the roles of the new crew now that their initial mission is over? But of all these things yet to uncover, we believe we have uncovered one huge surprise that we'll see during Picard's second season. And this is a surprise that will rock the foundation of the entire Star Trek universe. This reveal is a bombshell, and it's a character arc we've been waiting 22 years to see. So get ready for a wild ride, because we are about to show you how Seven of Nine is going to become the new Borg Queen. We are Borg. Make sure you stay tuned until later in the show, where we'll be showing you hands down the best video ever made for our sponsor Raid Shadow Legends. And if you haven't already subscribed to our channel, please do so now and give us a thumbs up if you want more amazing reveals about your favorite shows. Also, click the notification bell to never miss an episode because YouTube has a very short memory. And make sure you stay tuned to the end to see how to get this awesome 7 of 9 graphic design from the amazing artists at MixTease.com. Just the thought of Seven of Nine being taken back into the Collective gives you a shudder. So imagine the horror of her not only joining the Collective, but doing so as its queen. There are little hints that were dropped into our laps during Season 1 of Picard, but we feel this is a journey Seven has been on since the very beginning of her story. And while we believe she's been on this path for a long time, there were very specific things she and others said while on the board cube that tells us she has unfinished business in the Queen Chamber. But let's get back to that in a moment. If you are familiar with Star Trek Voyager and Seven of Nine's story, then the one thing you know is for some reason that has never fully been explained to us, Seven is incredibly important to the Borg. From the beginning, there was an emotional and sometimes physical tug of war between Captain Janeway and the Borg Queen over Seven. Yes, it makes for good television, but isn't it odd how the Borg Queen will do almost anything to bring her back into the Collective? Seven of Nine, tertiary adjunct of Unimatrix 01. From the beginning, she was more special than the average drone in the Borg hierarchy. She was chosen by the Borg to communicate with Captain Janeway so they could work together to develop a weapon to defeat Species 8472. Granted, she was working with the knowledge of the Collective, but the person who was Annika Hansen was chosen to represent the Borg in this extremely important threat to their existence. In fact, Seven was a favorite of the Borg Queen. She allowed her to be separated from the Collective by Voyager in order for her to gain experience as an individual. But why? Could it be because there is something special about Seven that is different from the other Borg drones? We are never told how the Borg select a new queen. Is it possible they are groomed? Was Seven being groomed to be a future Borg queen all along? We know the queen wanted a companion that would choose her with their own free will. Perhaps someone can only lead the Borg if they choose to do so with their free will since the Borg Queen retains part of her identity when she joins the Collective. Seven is extremely intelligent, strong, and creative. She is persistent and has an incredible range of features and skills. Seven is among less than 1% of Borg that can access Unimatrix Zero while regenerating. And among those, she is the only one who can remember it when she wakes up. No wonder the Borg Queen calls Seven unique and her favorite. Unlike other Borgs who have been severed from the Collective, Seven retains an enormous amount of information. Picard barely remembers his time with the Queen, but Seven seems to retain almost everything. Perhaps this is intentional. Could she have been modified as a drone to be able to hold more information so that someday she could retain both her consciousness and the Collective at the same time? Could any Borg march into the Queen's chamber and take control of the Collective? Or is that something Seven was specifically built to do? Were they preparing her to be a Queen from the beginning? Let's get back to that in a moment. But before we reveal Seven's true path, 
check out what has been rated the number one video ever made for our sponsor, Raid, Raid Shadow Legend. Take a breath and listen carefully. Have you ever taken down the Demon Lord? Crushed the Ice Golem? Ascended the Doom Tower? Amazing. Fought millions of real worthless scrubs in the arena? Well, let me show you how because it's time to Raid Shadow Legends. Explore millions of champion combinations and master countless tactics as you take on raid bosses, dungeon runs, campaign battles, and PvP arena matches. Use my links below to download Raid yourself. Amazing. If you want to get a huge head start, all you have to do is hit the link in the description. And if you're a new player, you will get a brand new epic champion, Chonolo. 200,000 silver, one XP boost, one energy refill, and one ancient shard as soon as you get in game. And join me in the ultimate raid. raid Shadow. Extra rewards good for the next 30 days only. So hurry up and download today. So why would Seven become the Borg Queen? Since being severed from the collective, she spent her life trying to regain her identity. Even when she had a chance to rejoin the Collective and destroy the human race, she chose the human race. So assuming becoming the Queen is a choice you have to willingly make, what would make Seven agree to give up her humanity? The answer is her humanity. Seven spends the bulk of the first season of Picard miserable. A member of the Fenris Rangers, she helps instill justice in lawless and dangerous regions of the galaxy. But these are dark times for Seven. The transition from an unapologetic, by-the-book member of the Voyager crew to a vigilante revenge specialist with a chip on her shoulder began 13 years before the events in Picard. Echeb, a former Borg drone whom Seven helped regain his individuality in the last two seasons of Voyager, had become like a son to her. In the fifth episode of Picard, we see a flashback of Icha being torn apart on the operating table, fully conscious and with no anesthetic. He's being ripped apart by a chop doc who is selling Borg parts on the black market. Seven shows up too late to save him and has to put Icha out of his misery with a phaser. Seven is unconsolable and commits herself to tracking down the person who ordered Icha and the other Borg ripped apart. She has spent the past 13 years on this mission. This hunting down of the Borg for parts cuts deeper for Seven than it might for others. One of the reasons Seven was able to regain her humanity was as a result of her attempts to help the Borg. Whether it is Ichib, the Borg One, who was created by her nanoprobes and the Doctor's hollow emitter, the three Borg from her original Unimatrix, or saving Unimatrix Zero from destruction by the Borg Queen. It is clear that Seven's path to finding her humanity was paved by helping Borg in need along the way. Now, in 2399, Seven is at the end of a long road of helping and getting revenge for Borg who were in trouble or wronged. And this path has ended at a giant Borg cube filled with being severed by the Collective and enslaved by Romulans. Whatever is a Borg sympathizer to do? The big mission here is supporting Picard, but you can bet that deep down, what Seven really wants to do, other than play kissy face with Rafi, is free the Borg in captivity and help them achieve their individuality. Perhaps not just these Borg, but others as well. But hold on to that thought for a moment. One of the highlights of the first season of Picard is when Seven becomes queen of a micro-collective on the Borg Cube. She realizes that this is the only move they have to stop the Romulans. But she is disgusted by the idea of assimilating others, and she fears that once she starts, she may not want to stop. Once the cube is wrestled from the Romulans, Elnor, in awe, asks if she is going to assimilate him now. After a pause, she responds, Annika still has work to do. And Seven releases herself from the Collective. We believe this action is a big reason why Seven will become the Borg Queen in Season 2. But more on that in a moment. First, it's important to get a feel for what Seven says to others after this experience. She tells Picard that for a moment, when she was connected, she could see everything. That short sentence says so many things. Yes, she could see the events unfolding that would allow her to help Picard, but what else did she see? 
Perhaps she saw other dislocated Borg severed from the Collective and in need of help. When Elnor looks around at the ex-Borg and asks if they would be better off dead because no one likes them, they have no home, and they don't belong anywhere, Seven responds by asking him if she is better off dead. She says she is an ex-Borg, has no home, and doesn't belong anywhere. I just put a phaser to my head and get it over with. The moment is supposed to be one of hope, as Elnor tells Seven, Because I'd miss you. But the deeper reality is that this is exactly how she feels. She sees herself as a mirror image of these ex-Borg on the cube, and deep down she knows, as has happened time and time again with her, that helping them is in essence helping herself. And this is a deep part of Seven's character. Seven doesn't have many big moments in Picard following her Micro Queen scene. But every scene she does have is filled with very specific dialogue that is unessential to the main story, unless the ultimate goal is to get Seven back in that queen chamber. Seven's words to Captain Rios are important at the end of the season. She admits the wrong of killing people just because they deserve it. It's a moment of repentance and an opportunity for her once again to walk the path of righteousness. But perhaps the biggest seal on her fate is provided by Jean-Luc Picard's final words to her during the season. Seven tells him, Keep saving the galaxy, Picard. And he responds to her by saying, That's all on you now. Game, set, match. Seven's path to save is now set before her. Now that we've provided the evidence that we believe sets the stage for Seven of Nine to become Queen of the Borg, here is how we think it will go down. With Q appearing to be the main catalyst for the story arc in Season 2, Seven, a fan favorite, is the ideal character for carrying the secondary storyline. Michael Chabon, prior to stepping down from Picard, had suggested that Seven get her own spin-off series. With enough Star Trek irons in the fire for now, it would be better for Star Trek Universe head Alex Kurtzman to lean into the Seven character during Picard Season 2 and determine if it's worth the resources to give her a show of her own. Yes, it certainly is. After watching the latest trailer for the new season, it ends with Seven looking into a mirror and her Borg implants are gone. Is this a visualization of her individual human consciousness now connected and perhaps trapped as part of the Queen's consciousness with the Collective? We believe that Seven's story will pick up with her trying to help the ex-Borg. She will come to the realization that there are more for her to help than she can possibly do on her own. She will have misplaced confidence in her ability to disconnect from the Collective as a result of how easily she put it down during Season 1. This will allow her to justify becoming the Queen again in an effort to help other Borg believing she can control the Collective and leave at any time she chooses. What we will learn is that when she told Picard she saw everything in her moment as the Micro Queen, she also saw scattered drones in her part of the Alpha Quadrant that were severed from the Collective and needed help. She will initially start with the Borg Cube she freed, and she will find success. She will begin to help them and see progress and feel that she can control the Hive Mind. This will lead her to reach out to more Borg. The more Borg she reaches out to, the larger the Collective and the less hold her individual consciousness will have over the Collective. She will find her individuality slipping away the more Borg she brings into her Collective. She suddenly feels the desire to assimilate and to reach a perfection which is a key ideology for the Borg. She will eventually come to the realization and desire to connect to the overall Borg Collective. But didn't Janeway destroy the Borg with her neurolytic pathogen? Apparently not. During Picard Season 1, we learned that the Romulan ex-Borg Ramda went through the admonition 14 years earlier and was assimilated sometime after that event. If Admiral Janeway allowed herself to be assimilated to destroy the Borg in 2378, how is it possible that Ramda was assimilated after admonition, which was in 2385? This was quickly glossed over during Season 1, but obviously answers the question of whether Janeway destroyed the Borg completely. The answer is no, and now Borg Queen Seven, whose humanity is slowly slipping away, is hell-bent on connecting with the rest of the Collective. The only problem is, if she does, 
her individual consciousness will be forever lost to the Borg. Her friends, realizing this, will put their own lives on the line to try and save her. No longer able to identify them and racing towards a transwarp drive to the Delta Quadrant, Seven will be on the verge of assimilating her friends when an old face arrives to confront her. Chakotay, his hair now completely gray, but with chiseled facial features and his iconic face tattoo, stands face to face with the new Borg Queen. He urges her to remember her humanity. Seven of Nine doesn't assimilate. He will say, she saves lives, does not take them. He will remind her that from the moment she decided to become an individual, she fought tooth and nail for her humanity. She will look at him with her black eyes and he will ask her, are you going to let the Borg take it from you again? Unable to reach her, his final words finally hit home. What would Janeway think of what you are doing now? Remembering the only mentor she ever had, the mother she never had. These are the words that allow Seven to free herself as the Borg cube shuts down just short of the transwarp conduit to the Delta Quadrant. Now, perhaps that ending is more of a fantasy than how current series creators would end it. Perhaps Seven becoming the Borg Queen will end the series in a cliffhanger, or maybe Locutus will be the one to talk Seven down. The show is called Picard, after all. Whatever happens, the one thing that is obvious is that all of this evidence puts Seven squarely on the path to becoming the Borg Queen. It's not a matter of if, only when. Resistance is futile. What do you think of Seven becoming the new Borg Queen? Let's talk about it in the comments below. Also, check out this Star Trek inspired 7 of 9 graphic design at MixTees.com and get 20% off your purchase by using coupon code THEPOPCAST. The link is in the description below. Don't want the show to end? Become a PopCast member by hitting the join button to get exclusive content including special member live streams, Discord privileges, behind the scenes access, and so much more. Click join and let's hang out. Also, make sure you head over and subscribe to the PopCast Unleashed for discussions, updates, clips, and other special videos. Click on the link below. Until next time, 